Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're looking at Lee Code problem number 242, is valid anagram. So given two strings S and T, return true if T is an anagram of S. So what is an anagram? Two strings are anagrams of one another if they contain the same exact characters in just different order. So if we take a look at example one, we have the word anagram, and then we have the letters anagram shuffled around in a random order. These two are anagrams because they consist of the same exact letters and the same exact frequency of those letters. All right, so let's take a look at the two strings we have, anagram and nagaram. And if two strings are anagrams, that means they consist of the same exact letters and letter counts just in shuffled order, right? And so in the brute force case, what we could do is we could sort each of the strings and then compare the sorted order. So let's sort S, and now we have A, 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 G, M, N, R, and then let's sort T, and we should have the same exact string if they're anagrams of one another, right? And in this case, we could compare the sorted strings. They're equal, and that means we have anagrams. Now, what's the time complexity of this algorithm? It's O of N log N plus M log M, where N is the length of S and M is the length of T, because we have to sort both strings. And the space complexity is constant space. We're not storing anything. We're just sorting two strings and then comparing whether or not they're equal. All right, so we have two strings and we want to determine if they're anagrams of one another. We're trying to do this without sorting the input strings. And so we want to come up with an algorithm where we could scan the strings S and T only once to have an O of N plus M time complexity as opposed to N log M plus M log N. Now, we know that for two strings to be anagrams, they need to have the same letters and the same frequency of those letters. And so it would be very useful if we can keep track of a letter and its corresponding frequency, right? And so what data structure could give us constant time search for a key and keep track of an associated value for that key? It's actually a hash map, right? In the hash map, we could keep track of the letter that we saw in S and the associated frequency with that letter. And so let's see how that works. We could scan the first letter, which is A, and we could update the frequency count. In this case, we didn't see an A before, so the frequency count was just zero. And so we add one to it. So we have A is one. We saw an A and the, the amount of times that we saw an A is only once. Now we scan N. We didn't see an N, so we just add it as one. Now we scan A again. In this case, we have an A and we've seen one A before. So let's increment that count to two. Now we have two A's, right? And this is the concept we're gonna use. Next, we scan G, let's add it. We scan R, let's add it to the frequency. We scan A again. We have two A's before, so let's increment the count to three. We now have seen three A's in the string S. Now we move on to M and we haven't seen M before, so we add it to the frequency. Now we need to satisfy five distinct characters um, for T to be an anagram of S, right? We have the letters A, N, G, R, M, where the frequencies of those letters is three, one, 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 and one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan T, and for every letter in T, we're gonna decrement uh, the frequency in the hash map. And what we're looking for is for all the values in the frequency hash map to be zero, because that means for every letter that we saw in S, we saw the same exact letter in T. And so let's start by scanning N. So we scan string T, we have N. Now we need to decrement the frequency of N in the hash map. So we saw one N before in S, so let's decrement that count to zero. And what this means is that we've satisfied the letter N. We've seen as many Ns in S and T because the frequency count is now zero. So let's move on to the next element, which is A. Let's decrement the count to two and move on. We go to G, we decrement the count to zero and we do this for every single letter in T. We decrement A again, we go to R, we decrement R. We go to A, we decrement A again to zero. We go to M and we decrement M. Now I want to stop here. If we didn't have the last letter Z in T, we have two anagrams, right? T is an anagram of S because if you look at the frequency map, all of the values are zero. That means we've seen every single letter in T that's in S 
and we saw the exact counts of those letters, right? So we have two anagrams. Now, what happens if we have a letter in T that's not contained in S? Or what happens if instead of a Z, we had an extra A, right? What would happen? How would that look like? So let's scan Z. And now we have a negative value in our frequency, right? Even if this wasn't a distinct character, instead of Z, let's say we had A. That means A would be negative 1, right? And so what does that mean? That means that in T, we have an excess letter. We have an extra letter that wasn't represented in the string S. So are these two strings anagrams? No, they're not, right? And so what we need to do at the end of our algorithm is we need to ensure that all the values in frequency are zero. If we have any values that are positive or negative, that means we need to return false because we didn't see the exact character count in S and T. And the time complexity of this is O of N plus M. We have S and T, we iterated through each string only once. First base, we have O of N, because in the worst case, we store every single letter in S in a hash map. So even though we can't beat the time complexity of O of N plus M, there is an optimization we can make in the algorithm. So over here, I want to go back to the step where we filled out the frequency hash map after scanning the entire string S. And we noticed that we have, we have to satisfy five frequency letters, right? What are the frequency letters? A, N, G, R, and M, right? We know we need to satisfy these five letters. And so instead of at the end of the algorithm needing to loop through the entire hash map and ensuring all the values are zero, what we could do instead is keep track of a single variable called letters to satisfy and initialize it to five, which is the length of the hash map. And as we iterate through the string T, if we determine that the value of the frequency of a letter is zero, we can decrement the letters to satisfy because that means we've satisfied that letter. And so let's see how that looks. Let's start by scanning N and decrementing the count in the hash map to zero. Now we're at zero. So we can decrement the letters to satisfy. Remember, if the value is zero, that means I satisfied this specific letter. I've seen, um, I've seen the exact amount of Ns in T as I did in S. So letters to satisfy is now four, right? N is satisfied. So I go to A, A is two. Do I change letters to satisfy? No, because I still need to see two more A's to satisfy that letter. So I move on, I go to G. G is zero, so do I decrement letters to satisfy? I do. We just satisfied the letter G, so decrement letters to satisfy to three. Now I move on to A, I decrement it by one. Should I update letters to satisfy? No, I don't. It's because the frequency of A is still greater than zero, so I continue my algorithm. Now I go to R, I decrement the, the value of R, now it's zero, so my letters to satisfy changes to two. I only have two more letters to satisfy, A, and M. Now I move on to the final A. In this case, the value is now zero. So letters to satisfy decrements. We just satisfy the letter A. Now I go on to M. We decrement that value. Letters to satisfy is now zero. And if we didn't have the Z in this case, all we had to do is check is letters to satisfy equal to zero. Then return true. We're a valid anagram. There's no need to rescan through the entire frequency values. So this is, it doesn't change the time complexity, but it's more optimal uh, from running the code. And so in this case, once we do scan the letter Z, we have a negative value in the hash map. And so if we see a negative value, we could just return false right away. That means that we just saw an excess value in T that's not an S. So we know for sure we're not a valid anagram. And so the time complexity of this is still O of N plus M. It doesn't change, but it's just a more optimal way of running the code. And we'll see how that looks in the coding implementation. So the brute force solution is really cool to see because it's literally one line of code. We sort S and then sort T and ensure that they're equal. And this is literally one line of code. And this is the non-optimal solution. And for the optimal solution, I'm actually going to have a conditional check to start out the algorithm. If the length of S does not equal the length of T, is it possible to be an anagram? No, right? It's actually not. So this is like a small optimization you could add to your algorithm because the lengths have to be equal. If they're not equal, then don't even process them at all. Next, we're going to need 
uh, to keep track of the frequencies of S, right? So I'm going to create a default dictionary over here in Python. And what the default dictionary does is if I initialize it to int, integer in this case, if there's no value in the hash map, it just defaults that value to zero. So it just makes coding easier because we don't have to check if a specific letter is already in the hash map. Now I'm going to say for letter in S, the frequencies of that letter plus equal one. Now I'm going to say for every letter in T, the frequencies at this letter minus equal one, right? We decrement the frequency count in the hash map. Now we need to ensure that all the values in the hash map are zero. So all X is equal to zero for X in frequencies values, right? And so this is Python notation. It basically says for all the values in the frequency hash map, verify that all the values are equal to zero, right? And this is what this all notation does in Python. Now, if we run this, it will succeed. But once again, we have to iterate through all the values in the hash map. Can we be more optimal than this? So what we could do instead of iterating through all the, the values in the frequency hash map is we could have this concept of a letters to satisfy variable. So letters to satisfy is equal to how many distinct letters we have in the string S, which is just the len of the frequency hash map. Now we could say for every letter in T, we decrement the frequency. If the frequency at this letter is negative, that means that we saw an extra letter in T. So we're not an anagram. We could return false right away. And if the frequencies at the specific letter is zero, that means we just satisfied this letter, right? So letters to satisfy minus equal one. And then at the end of our algorithm, instead of looping through the entire hash map again, we could just say is letters to satisfy equal to zero. If it is, then that means we're an anagram. Let's run this and verify it succeeds. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.